Hello everyone. Sadly, I've deleted the intro to this video. So here's a new one. Today I'm going to tell you about how to balance your camera on the Weeble Lab gimbal. In this case, I'm using the Sony a7 III. And then I'm going to show you how to use image transmission. The biggest problem with image transmission is once you plug the cable from the Weeble Lab into your a7 III, you're going to lose the steady shot. And you need that steady shot if you're going to walk around with your Weeble Lab gimbal because the steady shot will take the walking balance out. Okay, so now I've locked it using this one, I've locked it using this one, and I've locked it using that one. Let me put it this way so you can all see this. So I'm going to put that aside. Now, here you have my A7 III. I have a 16 to 35, which is probably the best for blogging. If I'm just normally working, walking around with the Weevil Lab and my A7 III, I put this much lighter lens on. It's the Rokinen uh, 24 millimeter f2.8 and then I put a neutral density filter on one of these 2x2 two two plastic neutral densities but today I'm going to talk to you about how to mount your a7 III on the camera so I just I'm taking it out of the small rig half cage small rig half cage with the uh, Camivate handle for those of you that are researching these things the small rig half cage has a, a plate that your camera screws into and holds it by the front it has this, uh, sort of a 90 degree angle piece that grabs it and I always leave this on the camera because it protects the the, tri the, uh, the tripod screw hole in the camera. It's so easy to pop those out on a Sony camera. So by screwing this one thing in and then screwing other things into this, I am able to save the, the uh, tripod screw on the camera from breaking. Okay, so I have my camera here. So the first thing I'm going to balance on the Weeble Lab is the 16 to 34 lens. Now, as I've told you, I don't like to take this bottom plate off from this small rig half cage. It's probably the most inventive thing small rig has done. When they redid their cage and made the half cage and made this uh, a mounting plate. In order to use the three screws that Zion provides you, which are all these smaller kinds, you need to take this larger shoe, the larger screw hole that Small Rig put on their mounting plate and stick an adapter in there, which I will do right now. Okay, come on, go in. My screwdriver is a little small, but there we go. I got it. Then, there go my batteries. I'm going to stick my batteries into the the Zayu now and take these two things and put them down over here if you all don't mind. Okay, your batteries of your Zayu, they go in over here in the battery compartment. They both go in the same way facing forward. Don't put the battery door back on your Zion Weevil Lab. You will have trouble getting it off every time and then you will come to hate this thing. So, leave that in the, in the uh, nice suitcase like foam box they gave you and never put it back on. Alright, so the batteries are where they can't fly off. That's good. So, I never like to have just one screw holding the camera down if I'm walking around with it. So what I have done is, this is how you have to attach it, I now stick two screws in. Now how the heck am I going to get two screws in, you're asking me? Well, you screw one in, 
let's pull this out of here. This is the way it comes. It slides right out. So this is the main plate. They call it a Manfrotto plate, supposedly, but I don't really know. This, I know, is a, a Swiss Arca plate, because this will go into my Swiss Arca head, and it's convenient when I'm not trying to film the camera. Okay, so, that's how it's gonna go. Now, how do we get these screws in? On the edge, there is a screw adapter. Slide that one down, then I put the second one in. Well, let's see here, there we go. Okay, two screw holes. You're gonna to need to go all the way back with this because this is a heavy lens. It's gonna to have to sit all the way back. Okay, there we go. This will be the hard to balance with a Weevil Lab, but it can just do it. Of course, when you put it on the Weevil Lab, you will have to take the eye cup off the uh, eyepiece. I never use this personally, so I took it off and put it in a safe place. It's so easy to lose these things. Thankfully, they sell replacements on Amazon if you need one. I think B&H might also have a replacement. Up to you. Okay, it's now held in with two screws. I would advise you do this anytime you have a camera on a gimbal. Now, how do you get it back into the bottom plate? Well, I have it here. I'm going to show you. You line it almost totally up, and then you push the other side until it locks in. So you line it all the way up, you push you pop, 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 push the button down here and you push it in and there you go. Now let's put it in. Make sure this side up is up when you've locked it. It shouldn't lock the other way, but it also won't work the other way. It only works this way. Then you slap this in and you slide it in. And they have an arrow here that shows you it going backwards. And that's the way it has to go in. It only goes in one way. And then over here they have the button. Push the button and it will go in. And now it can't slide out. So there you go. There is your camera. It is not balanced. Let me undo this. It has to go all the way back more than likely. Let's see. Yeah, that's not balanced. Okay, uh, can I go any further back on that? No. Okay, so it says it is that way too far. Let's see if I can get it to balance today. Alright, that's good this way. All the way back is what you'll have to do. But now I have to do this part over here because it's not balanced up and down. Okay. That's better. When you have the big lens on, you almost have to have the bottom bar here. This part here will almost always have to be all the way out when you have a big lens on. And let's see. That might be good. Remember to tighten this one. It's so easy to forget. That's pretty good. Okay, now I can do the front here. The front's all the way back, as you've seen, and it wouldn't clear the back, and it wouldn't clear that with the eye cup. So, let's see. Have I gotten this good? It's still a little. That's too much. That's good. So, for a large lens that sticks out, this um, up-down one has to be almost all the way to the end, but not quite there. Word for the wise. 
And the back one will need to be almost all the way to the back as far as you can get it, because this lens is gigantic. And I have it in the 35 millimeter mode. As you move it around, you may... Okay, here we go. I found a good spot. 28 millimeters. You'll get it to balance better if you move, it, move the lens millimeter left or right a little. To balance the side, you need to bring it back over here there we go the side is now balanced your goal is to get it balanced like this and mine isn't quite balanced like that so give me a second and I will work it out let's see now is it balanced this way is it balanced this way it's balanced this way I think no nope, maybe not quite is it balanced this way? Let's try this one again. This is always the hardest actually to balance. Also, make sure you tighten that axi. Okay, that's better. Oh! I don't think this one was tight. If you think it's moving around on you, it's because of that axis. If you can get your weevil to stay up over here, then you have achieved... There you go. You've achieved balance as you can get to stay up there. Okay, now to do the back one. The back one is almost always all the way out as it is here. I will now release this one and in order to balance it you have to hold it like this. When it moves very slowly, which it's not doing right now, it's moving very quickly. Let's try pushing that out a little bit. That's okay, I guess. This is all right. Now I can power this on. It'll work. Uh, let's see. We'll move this one a little bit more. Yeah, it's moving much. Yeah, I have to go a little more out. You almost have to pull this one out all the way with backstop because you have such a heavy front weight. It feels, when it's, okay, so now it's moving again too fast, so that's too much. It has to come in a little bit, like maybe flush with the unit. Yeah, this is better. All right, we'll go a little more in and see what we get, because obviously I'm wrong. Let's see, how about there? At four. No, it's moving too fast too. Let's try in over here at five, see what four and a half. Uh, if it requires too much force to push it, then you're not going the right way. Let's go back to, oh, that's as far as we can go. All right, let's try as far as we can go again. Is that better? That's better. Let's try over here. This is good. As long as it moves smoothly and doesn't push back on you when you're moving it or race ahead, then it's good to go with this giant lens on. If you're just walking around trying to do backgrounds, you want to use the 24 for Canon. The lower the millimeter, the less shake there is apparent. All right, so let's begin. I'm going to leave the camera. I'm going to take the camera off of here. If I can figure out how to again. Okay, pop and then push out. Okay, there we go. Now I need my screwdriver, which is where? Ah, here's my screwdriver. Thank you. 
The bottom plate is too far forward in order to use that with a 2x2 two two plate. So when you use a smaller lens, you put the plate about the middle. And with the plate in about the middle, you can use the eye cup. FYI. Okay, the plate's in the middle, now I can do this. All right. All right, now my smaller Canon 24 millimeter lens is on here. Now, I'm gonna put this back on the camera and I'm gonna rebalance it with a smaller lens. Let us pull it up and lock it. Lock it. And lock it. All right. Smaller lens. There we go, locked in. Now, let's balance this with the smaller lens. Okay. Okay, and then back a little bit maybe. Where can I push back? Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, a little more. Okay, that looks good. I'm locking it. Now I'm going to unlock it again. Now, to up. Up needs to come back. It's better to pull up on the camera and you'll know you got up. So with a smaller lens, this uh, up and down arm. There, that's about good for the up and down arm. And tighten it. Make sure you're holding the camera so it gets actually all the way tight. If you don't finish tightening this and it gets loose, you'll be in trouble when you're walking around with it. It'll start suddenly shifting on you. Okay, so I have two things and I have this all locked in. Now let's do the other this way, which is this one. It's too far that way. It's got to go more this way. A little more. Perfect. That's pretty good. It should be easy to move without it suddenly pushing back on you. So you should be able to do this. It'll stay here. It'll stay there. That's how you know you got those parts right. Now let's do the final axis. And let's figure this out. Make sure you have, to, you have to pick it up to do this one and you have to unlock it and let's see. Oh, look at that. First time. It should move very slowly and not push back on you, and that's how you know you got it right. Okay, it's moving a little bit fine. Excellent, so that's with a small lens, and now it's balanced. And you can put your eye cup back because it clears it very easily. All right, next step. I'm going to talk to you about image transmission and connecting to the app. You have to connect the cable to the camera on one end and you connect it to the Weeble Lab on this end. The one that looks like a micro USB. It says camera control here. And on the other side it says focus control. And they made a USB C. You can't make a mistake with this. It's very easy. So, USB C. The downside is over here, the angles, there we go. The right angle one goes here, right angle one, and the other one goes 
A73 right in over here. Oh, I need to tell you something. On the A73, let's turn my A73 on. You need to be in uh setup setup for USB connection needs to be on PC remote to connect into this. Now when you're in PC remote and you're in movie mode, you will not get steady shot. Steady shot is the second piece of the puzzle of getting smooth footage. It almost the Zion takes rid of gets rid of all the shakes and all the uh, left right motion, leaving the steady shot on the camera to get rid of the walking motion. And it does that almost perfectly. Especially when you're using a wide lens like a 24 millimeter. If you're going to use that heavy 16 to 35, you gotta use it down at the at the 20 to 16 range. If you start using the tighter range, you're gonna see more shake. All right, I've set it to PC mode on the USB, and I'm gonna plug it in. I've also set this not to charge off with the USB. USB power supply off. Otherwise, it's gonna drain the Weeble's batteries faster than you would imagine. So make sure you turn the power supply off. And make sure your camera is in airplane mode. Uh, which is on network one. Make sure airplane mode is on so you don't accidentally connect to it with your phone and kill off your eye detect autofocus. Very annoying if you're filming somebody and you want that on. Although, if you're just walking around filming scenery, you do not want the eye detect or the face detect on. In fact, it's probably better to leave it in uh, manual mode and set the, uh, the focus to be, um, um, what is it, landscape? Whatever it is. I forget the name of it. I'll remember shortly. I'll stick it in. Um, yeah. Leave it at the, at the widest focus so everything is in focus. All right. Anyway, I'm going to plug it in, and the camera is going to PC Connect, I think, in a few... Well, as soon as I turn the Weeble on. Let me turn the camera off, because there's a certain option to doing this. Camera off. Now that I've got it connected, I'm going to turn the Weeble on. The Weeble is on now. As you can see, it's rotated the camera. I'm going to rotate it back to you, and now I'm going to turn the camera on. Uh, there we go, I found the switch. The camera is now turning on, and the camera is uh, connecting to the Weevil, to the cable. Give it a few seconds. And now the Weevil and the camera are connected, and you can use this record button to start making a movie. Um, you can also change some of the camera settings on the Weeble, but I don't really need to do that. I'd rather just do it on the camera. If you want to walk around with the camera on the Zion, you cannot use the cable because using the cable will turn off steady shot. And you need to steady shot on the camera to steady your walking steps. So if you're trying to see yourself and you want to get 4K ID check, use the image transmission feature with the cable here to your cell phone rather than the Wi-Fi capabilities of your camera, which... Okay, I'm gonna turn my, cell, my trusty cell phone on. This cell phone is too old to use Imaging Edge, by the way. It won't allow me to download it in the Play Store. Very annoying. But, ZY Play will download onto this old phone, and it, everything works. Okay, I'm opening up ZY Play. I don't need a don't need to update, thank you. Alright, this is the first screen you get. When you get into their app, you have to connect click connect to device. It doesn't matter what device is showing on the screen. Don't worry about switching them. 
and it's going to show you the Weeble Lab in this case and it's going to be a circle with a connected device still going don't worry about that once you've found something it's okay you don't click the Weeble Lab it won't do anything you click the word that says camera in order to connect to a Weeble Lab you must have your Bluetooth on and you must have your location on Okay, join the network. As long as your Bluetooth is on, it'll find the Weeble, then it'll try and join this network. You click the... This thing looks like a Wi-Fi signal, and up will come this thing with the connection message. It now says I'm connected. If you're wondering what the Wi-Fi password is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You only need to type that in the first time. Okay, now I'm going to connect to the image connection by pushing this thing in the center and now I have my image connection. Now I can see what the camera can see.